What's up, everybody? What's up? Um, I just want to give a round of applause for Jesus playing the drums tonight. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but uh, I thought that was pretty cool. He played piano, too. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about testimonies, um, my testimony and your testimony. And um, well, let's open up in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for um, bringing us all here tonight, God, and um, make all these words tonight your words and not mine, and um, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, we're going to start with some scripture tonight, Psalm 71, 15 through 18. I don't know if it's going to come on the board. Oh, it did. Nice. It says, uh, my mouth will tell of your righteous deeds of your saving acts all day long. Though I know not how to relate to them all, I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are welcome to come. Sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> um, we all go through struggles so that we can share, our go- share how the gospel has saved us and give the glory to God when sharing with the next generation. Everything that happens in your life can be used to glorify God, no matter how bad what you did was or how bad what you will do in the future will be. The Bible says in John 8, 11, go now and leave your life of sin to a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Through, <laughs> through prayer, the word of God, and discipline, the Holy Spirit will change you and, will start, and you will start to see the fruits of the Spirit in your life. There's a story that stands out to me when you think you're... Uh, When you think you're too far gone and there's no way God can use you or your testimony, Uh, there was a demon possessed man living in a cave naked. Jesus was traveling by a boat because obviously Jesus was a big fisher guy. And if you don't believe me, you can check out Matthew 419. And uh, he was traveling on a lake and made a stop to talk with a man named Legion. Long story short, he casts the demons out of Legion, clothes him, and restores his sanity. After this, men who witnessed it all happen came to question Jesus. And this is Luke 8, 35 through 38. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had not seen it told the people how the demon, those who had seen it, I'm sorry, told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Uh, Jesus actually sent the demons into pigs, and they all ran off a cliff, which is a fun story in the Bible. Um, The naked, multiple demon-possessed man told the naked demon-possessed man to go tell everyone how God had made him new. This is a perfect example of no matter who you are or what your past is, Jesus can make you new again. Now, Legion with his clothes on now, can go tell the world that once he was possessed by demons, chained up in a cave, but the Savior came in and changed his life. And now it is his job, which is the Great Commission, Matthew twenty eight nineteen, to go and share what Jesus has done for all mankind. Now, this is my testimony. It's a little weird because my mom is sitting in the front row. So we're going to get a little confession in, too. (sighs) I'm looking forward to it. Um, I was raised in the church 
but I never really read the Bible, only did basic prayers, like before meals and um, like before you go to bed at night, really. Um, my parents got divorced when I was 16, and I started smoking weed and drinking at parties. My small sin slowly became bigger and bigger. The drinking and smoking led to hooking up with girls and further a porn habit, all while hearing that little voice in the back of my head saying, this is wrong, but the voice was getting harder and harder to hear. 2 Corinthians 11, 3 through 4 says, But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Paul is saying that the serpent makes the small sin in your life seem so harmless. And just like Eve, we are being led away from Christ. I know there's a meme, every day we get further and further from God, so you should probably know that one. Um, But even in the deepest sin, the Holy Spirit is that voice in the back of your head telling you that this is not what God intended for your life. 1 Thessalonians 1, 4 through 5 says, For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. In 2013, I was driving to school, rolling up some of the devil's lettuce and driving with my knee, which I know a lot of you guys do, texting, bad idea. Um, I ran a red light at Seminole Pratt and Okeechobee when God literally bonked me on the head using a Toyota Sequoia. I think we might have an image for that. (laughs) Yeah, that's 17-year-old stoner Adam on the right there. Um, I think I actually have a picture of the bonking. That was my bonking right there. Good wake-up call. Um, That was a day that I quit smoking and immediately changed my friend group. I wanted nothing to do with the people who were influencing me. I actually, shortly after that, ended up getting arrested. And when my parents went to pick up my car, it still smelled like weed. Well, this was a new car. The new car smelled like weed. And they found the weed in there, too. So um, after that, I had to do community service here at Community of Hope. And um, Chris Mascura, which is CJ's dad over there, he um, got my head on straight. And I started basically doing what God calls us to do is serve the church, and um, my faith grew incredibly in about those two years, and uh, after I graduated high school, I fell back into my old ways, and when I turned 21, I started drinking again and hanging out at bars. Um, My true faith and relationship with God didn't come until I was 22. I was getting tired of drinking and trying to get with girls. I needed motivation, and it seemed that the only way to get my attention was if God conveniently placed a Southern Baptist girl from South Alabama in my life. And that is exactly what he did. (laughs) Thank you, Roland. Almost in fear of disappointing her, I changed the music that I listened to and the people I spent my time with. I started reading the Bible every day, and that was right around the time our church went through a big change in youth pastors. I was torn on the whole situation, so I looked to the Word of God for guidance in the situation and kept coming back to Romans 3, 3 and 4. It says, what if some were unfaithful? What if their unfaithfulness Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true and every human being a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. 
That also happens to be the first Bible verse that I memorized because it was very prominent in my life and I was able to use it a lot outside of that. Um, That Bible verse hit me like a Toyota Sequoia. No matter what was right or wrong in the situ- no matter who was right or wrong in the situation, we're called to look to the Word of God for guidance. And when we speak about the situation, we can be backed by God's Word instead of what we think is right or wrong. From that point on, my opinion and other people's opinions just didn't matter to me anymore. God's Word was the final say, and we need to look to Him for guidance instead of putting our faith in man. From then on, the Bible was alive and relevant to me like it had never been before. I could feel God changing the direction of my life. All of this was God writing my story so I could teach kids like you guys that their purpose for their struggles... Hold on, I goofed that, sorry. Um, All of this was God writing my story so I could teach kids like you guys that their purpose that there is purpose for the struggles that you are going through. I can't even read my own typing. It's crazy. And to look to God's word and pray relentlessly for his guidance. When it comes to your testimony, it is always being written. You will stumble and fall even after you surrender to Jesus. The beautiful thing is that Jesus will always be with you, and the Holy Spirit will always be in you. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. This means that no matter what the situation is, we can always stop and pray or pull up your Bible app or paper Bible if you guys have one of those and search what the Bible says about whatever it is that you're going through. Ecclesiastes 1.9 says, What has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. So someone somewhere has gone through what you are going through and what you will go through. And you can always look to elders in the church, any of our adults or leaders, for guidance in those situations. Um... And there's also probably a story or a parable in the Bible that you can directly reference. That is the exact reason God gives us a testimony, for the sole purpose of helping others and furthering the kingdom of God. Revelation 12, 10 through 12 says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before God day and night, has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and all you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. We defeat the accuser through the blood of the Lamb, and the key word through our testimony. The heavens are rejoicing, and the devil knows his time is short. Uh, I'm going to close out in prayer. Dear Lord, I just want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity tonight to um, tell my testimony. And uh, I know I probably went way too short. It's supposed to be 20 minutes, but it's all good. And uh, I just want to thank you for having all the kids here tonight. And um, I just pray that some of the words here tonight affected somebody's life. And if they have the courage to come and talk to me after, I would love it. And uh, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Before we go too far past that, I just want to honor that. I know that was hard. Obviously, it's hard to share something like that, especially with your mom in the front row. That was not nice. (laughs) But um, before we go too far, Adam did this not to be like, look how far I've come. He did this because he cares about you guys, and he really believes that, like, 
these things, like the, the dumb meme of him getting hit on the head by Toyota Sequoia, is part of his story that enables him to care for you guys and love you guys better. So seriously, he does care for you and he does love you guys. So if any of that related to you, please come talk to him. And can we just honor the fact that he did that? Because that is a hard thing to do. Again, especially with your mom in the front row. <laughs> Thanks, Steve.